In Iraq, over 80 people have been killed in a surge of sectarian violence since the withdrawal of U.S. troops in December. As Elizabeth Palmer reports tonight, the insurgents are making no exceptions. The Baghdad School for the Arts is a calm refuge from the busy, broken city all around. Outside at break time, students play the same games as kids all over the world. Until the bell rings and it's back to work. A full academic program with extra arts instruction for these talented students. But Kara Al-Tahi, now a ballet teacher in the same school where she was once a student, is worried. Nobody respected the policeman. Nobody respect the street, nobody respect uh, anything. So to me, it, this is the most um, um, worst things in, in Baghdad, in Iraq. Do you feel safe? Uh, no. These children are rehearsing their end of semester concert. All of them would like some kind of future in the arts. A future that's now in doubt after a series of threats against artists and intellectuals. Including the cold-blooded shooting in September of the activist and writer Hadi Al-Mahdi, who helped organize regular Friday demonstrations for freedom of expression in central Baghdad. There's no evidence that the intimidation is a policy or a campaign orchestrated by the government, but it has got all artists, poets, writers, dancers, and musicians spooked. Altahi received her last death threat two years ago, but she's still nervous. I don't know what, the, what will happen to us, to the artists. Do you think it's because there is a strong religious, mm -hmm. fundamentalist mm -hmm. influence in the government? Yes, yes. Radical Islamists condemn many art forms, but this dance that celebrates the human and especially the female form is completely unacceptable. At the entrance to the school, there's tight security. Visitors and parents patted down and screened. In most countries, critics attack the arts. Here, it's more likely to be terrorists. Elizabeth Palmer, CBS News, Baghdad.